In this video, we'll introduce the optimization tool now available in Promax 6.0. In this case, what I'm going to first do is explain why we created the optimization tool to help you get an idea for what places you'll end up using it. Engineers are being asked to solve more complicated problems that involve really finding the limits of what equipment is able to do. In this case, a lot of times what we're trying to do is maximize some property or minimize some amount of energy usage that is not completely related to our equipment, but more the economics of the system or physical limitations of the system as well. So the optimization tool naturally fits in as a way to find the best possible solution for the process that we're either designing or operating. Before I go into how to build optimization problems, we have to define it. The first piece of an optimization problem is the objective function. The objective is the value that we want to either maximize or minimize, and it should be something that results in the best possible operation for your process. So in this case, I'm gonna introduce the first process that we're gonna work on is just a very simple compressor train where we're trying to compress gas from 50 PSI to 350 PSI. And we wanna know how do we operate this simple compressor train such that we'll use the minimum amount of horsepower and therefore the minimum amount of energy usage. In this case, my objective function is pretty clear. I want to minimize the uh, sum of my stage horsepowers. In this case, horsepower one plus horsepower two. The second piece of an optimization problem is any constraints that you want to put in. This limits the values that the optimization algorithm can actually pick and guides it towards a solution that is more valid. In this case, I know that I want my temperature leaving stage two to be 250 degrees. This could be for any reason, either stage two, the compressor is older, and we need to main, make sure that our metallurgy holds up there, or that maybe my air cooler isn't gonna be capable of cooling it down to where I need it to go if it's above 250 degrees. In any case, I'm going to constrain this problem such that that outlet condition is satisfied. The last piece you want to figure out is what values you have to actually manipulate using the optimization algorithm to achieve your goal. In this case, we're going to be adjusting the interstage pressure, so state pressure of stage uh, stream one. Once I've defined my optimization problem, I can begin inputting it into the optimization tool in Promax. We'll find the optimization tool in the ribbon just to the right of the execute block. If I click that and open it up, we'll have a blank optimization case. The first thing I need to do is define the variables that I want to reference. I'll start by defining my objective function. So I'll need to reference horsepower one and horsepower two in Promax. To add a value to the optimization tool, we simply need to find it in Promax and then right click on it and click add to optimization tool. This will bring us back to the optimization tool and give us a linked value to that exact object in my flow sheet. If I want to edit this property, all I have to do is click the three dots for the ellipses and I'll have the options to be able to edit. In this case, I want to reset my name to reflect what it is on the flow sheet, and so I'm going to change it to HP1. I'll do the exact same thing for the second horsepower. That way I can build my objective function. Once I have the values I need to create my objective function, I'll move over to the objective function tab. In this case, we're going to set up an objective. Once I click the three dots, we'll set up an objective such that the values that are in our optimization tool are being used. There are different options that you can pick. If you have a specific Promax value that you want to use as your objective, you can set that up directly using the Promax moniker box. You can do the exact same thing with an Excel cell or location if you wanted to optimize values on an Excel book. 
my case, I'm just going to add in my two variables that I have horsepower one plus horsepower two. See my value fill in and I can click OK. Now that I have my objective function set up, I need to add in the rest of the variables that I want to reference for the optimization problem. Double click T4 and add it to the optimization tool as well. I want to quickly add a simple constraint that just bounds one value or another. I can click add box constraints, which gives me an option for an upper and a lower bound. In this case, I want an upper bound of 250 degrees. Once I've done that, see that a constraint has appeared in the constraints window. In this case, our expression tells us what is being compared to our constraint value. So in this case, T4 is required to be less than or equal to 250. This cell shows red because our, object, our constraint value right now is not being satisfied. If I wanted to edit the constraint, I just click the three dots and I can write any math in this expression box that I want to. In this case, I'll keep it as T4. Lastly, I need to add in what variables Promax is allowed to manipulate. In this case, we're going to use the pressure of stream one. Once I add that to the optimization tool, you'll see that I actually have a white background on this cell and an active checkbox that's currently being selected. This means that I can go ahead and change my initial guess for the optimization problem from the optimization tool and it'll update that value in Excel in Promax. If I want to disable this value, this variable for my optimization run, I'll just click the active checkbox again and you'll see it deactivate. Now that I've got my entire optimization problem set up, I can go ahead and solve my optimization. If I look back at my flow sheet, Promax is going to solve over and over again until making steps such that our optimization problem can get solved. I take a look at my optimal value, show that our interstage pressure is now 164 PSI. While the optimization tool is running, this plot is being generated on the fly. This shows you for each step where the optimization tool currently is and gives you a general idea of where it is going. In this case, we started off with our constraints not being satisfied. So the optimization tool writes these red X's to let you know that while these might look like improvements on the objective function, we still haven't reached our constraints yet. But as we approached the optimal objective value, the constraints became satisfied and we ended up with our optimal solution of Sixteen thousand horsepower. If I wanted to see plots of the other variables, I could click the plots button. I want to see both my constraint value, T four, and my inter my interstage pressure, and to see how the optimization tool manipulated both of those for each step. Our interstage pressure increases for each iteration, and once we reach about 160 psi, we'll see we're getting pretty close to being able to solve. If I look at T4, you'll see that we actually display the upper bound that I selected on the plot itself, such that you can see how close 
the value is to our constraint. I want to see the raw data behind these. Place to look is our historian. This keeps a record of all of the optimization executions that have been attempted on this model. And I can go back and reference older attempts. If I want to see what the values are for those. Every variable that I have in the optimization tool gets recorded in this historian. And also the details of each run, what settings we picked are, are recorded as well. If I want to revert the simulation back to iteration eight, all I need to click is these green arrows. And it'll unsolve Promax and give us the input values for that run itself. I'll then be able to resolve Promax to see exactly you know, what details are present for that particular instance and see if it's a valid point for me to operate. Now that we've seen one simple case of the optimization tool in action, I want to discuss a more complicated implementation of this tool. And in doing so, I'll go over to my next flow sheet. This is a single stage mixed refrigerant process for producing LNG 1 million ton per year of LNG using a single mixed refrigerant, which is a blend of methane, ethane, butane, and nitrogen. In this case, we don't know beforehand what the optimal refrigerant composition is for this exact system. We have limitations on our heat exchanger, a minimum end approach temperature that must be greater than 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And we want to make sure that our hot side approach or T temperature of stream five minus temperature of stream eight, the difference between these has to be greater than or equal to 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Our objective function remains the same, however, where we're trying to minimize the total horsepower of compression required for this refrigeration system. We've already set up this optimization problem on another case, but you can save several different cases if you say have multiple objectives that you want to consider. My refrigerant blend optimization problem, I've already got my variables and my constraints set up and my solution found. But I went and reverted the model back to its initial guess to show the main differences. I started off with one composition and an initial guess for a single mix refrigerant pressure and a JT outlet pressure, those being the pressures of after the the compressor train, and then after the expansion valve. I let the optimization tool manipulate these values, giving it pretty much complete control over this design. My initial guess, while I had a feasible solution, had an objective value of 75.8 megawatts. And that was just a little bit too much for it to uh, actually be a working model. By the time the optimization tool was through with it though, we were able to get that down to 40 megawatts. So almost have the amount of energy required to get the same amount of LNG down to the same temperature. In this case, the optimization tool had to take a very long winding path to the optimal solution where sometimes the variables did not even follow the same trend throughout the process. As the composition changed, the optimal direction to improve on this single mix refrigerant pressure actually changed as well, first increasing and then decreasing. One thing was clear, though, is that having a end approach temperature close to our lower bound was always going to help getting the most out of that heat exchanger. This is a problem where actually finding a feasible solution can be difficult. You would think that my engineering judgment at least would tell me that if I were to increase the amount of 
uh, circulation of my refrigerant, even if I change the composition a little bit, would probably result in well, a higher objective function value, but it shouldn't actually cause my temperature different, my effective approach temperature to change that much. But what I ended up finding with this model is that if I increase the amount of methane in the refrigerant 300 tons per hour, I could actually cause a temperature cross in the heat exchanger. And that just goes to show how difficult picking a composition for this is. If I was off by just a you know, five or ten percent on my methane, then would not be even close to having feasible heat exchange for this this amount of circulation of our refrigerant. If I go back and update my solution to the optimal solution, you can see that Promax is able to find the best answer for this question. These two examples are nowhere close to the limitations of the optimization tool itself. We've seen this tool effectively uh, make better solutions out of gas plants, fractionation trains, any kind of heat exchanger network, and even an amine unit. And really, the, we haven't had enough time to test every single application of it, so the sky's the limit as far as what processes that this tool can be used to improve. One application of it is to actually set an objective function of zero and use the optimization tools, complex numerical algorithms to uh, hit a series of constraints, either inequality or even equality constraints, essentially making the optimization tool into a, a large scale multivariable solver. This can be extremely useful to target UA values or even fraction over designs inside of a cryo network. I look forward to seeing all the projects that we'll be even working on in the future with this tool. And I hope that this video has really sparked your curiosity and how optimization can be used to improve processes that you work on. <laughs>